they will relapse on your wedding day. They will relapse the day you go into surgery. They will relapse on the day you're closing on your new house. They will relapse the day you have your finals. They will relapse on the most important day of your life, the day that you're giving birth to your child. They will relapse that day or the next day or a week later and just totally screw the whole thing up. segment of the Psychopath Exposure Show. My name is Kita. Today I'm going to be reading off uh, a document that was sent to me by a survivor that was uh, you know, reaching out, asking for help, asking for some sort of advice and guidance on her situation. It's a pretty crazy situation because we're dealing not only with narcissism but possibly psychopathy and um, overall addiction, probably alcoholism and drug addiction as well, which is a terrible combination when you're dealing with toxic people, right? So for the sake of anonymity, I'm not going to reveal her name. So we're going to call her Chloe instead. I'm going to go ahead and read this. It's a, it's a long document. So I was moving things around, copying and pasting things to... to to make things easier to digest because as, as you all know when you're going through a traumatic situation like this and you're trying to vent everything just comes out uh, out of order and pretty chaotic but it feels good when you finally get it out of your system so you know thanks Chloe for um, letting this out for putting this on on paper or in, in digital and sending it to me uh, I'm gonna be most likely commenting along the way, so sit tight. We're talking about narcissism. We're talking about addiction here. This is going to be quite a doozy. So Chloe says she has a problem. I'm currently being devoured by the fact that my ex and his new supply have a baby due in less than a week. When he told me she was pregnant, I was in shock, but I processed through it in about two weeks. I was okay for most of their pregnancy as I'm working on myself. I have worked extremely hard to rebuild my life since I broke things off with him. And I've been focused on my goals and making my dreams become a reality. However, I have been struggling and feeling knocked down this last month or two and cannot seem to get up. I get glimpses of my old happy self from time to time Glimpses of the projects I need to work on but have no motivation. It's like I'm feeling stuck in a dark fog and cannot find the light. Well, just by that alone, I'm sure most, most people here on the channel can already empathize with you because it does feel like you're stuck in a dark fog. It does feel like you're, you're walking down just empty, dark cold corridors and you can't seem to find the way out you cannot see the light you can't find the light okay and that's what it feels like when you're dealing with someone that's so far gone in their disorder um, psychopaths narcissists even when you're dealing with addict you know along my early journey way way before i i was um i had to deal with a psychopath um, i used to work with a lot of addicts i used to work with a lot of recovering addicts and i learned a lot about that life. I learned a lot of about what it does when you're dating a recovering addict. It messes with your head just as well. We become very controlling, we become paranoid, um, we tend to focus more on their sobriety rather than in our own lives. We put our lives on hold, we become extremely codependent, um, controlling, irritable, and a, takes a toll on us too and then it contributes to our partner's addiction they tend to want to drink or or use more because we're, we're like always on their case trying to stop them from using it becomes really really uncomfortable really really detrimental to both parties health so um, you know you're talking about a new supply already who's pregnant and there's a baby coming in a week right this is I mean I can tell you right there right then and there I mean it, 
you got bigger things to worry about your own life not somebody not somebody else's problem you know she's his problem he's her problem that baby has nothing to do with you uh, but more more on that as I continue to read uh, so a little context here him and I were together about three years with lots of ups and downs he came from an addicted past but had been clean before we met I knew nothing of addiction coming from a clean family so I assumed everything was okay again if you don't know about this stuff you're only going based on your own experiences, your own life experiences. You don't understand what it is to actually have a severe addiction to a substance. You have no clue what that feels like. For, from somebody that comes from a clean family, from someone that does not have any type of addictions like this, it doesn't really make sense. How can you just continue to use when it's destroying your life? Why can't you just put it down and not do it, right? They can't. They can't do that. They can't do that. It's an addiction. It takes control over their own willpower. It's not easy to get through an addiction. Um, that's why they have the 12-step programs, which are phenomenal, phenomenal programs. I say they're much more powerful than a rehab treatment where, you know, you can put a, an addict in a rehab center. It's like they don't even want to be there. And they... Obviously, they're going to get clean while they're there, but the minute they get out, and I can tell you this from experience, the minute they get out, they start using again. But when you're in a 12-step program, you're actually doing that type of work. If you really want it, and you do the work, you work with a sponsor, you go through the steps. It's a spiritual program, and change does occur. So I urge you, Chloe, if you haven't already, check out some Al-Anon meetings, Check out some Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, some Narcotics Anonymous meetings, and just sit there and listen. Listen to the stories. Listen to the stories that these recovering addicts have to say. You're going to find a lot of really amazing, good-hearted people that are struggling with addiction in those rooms. And you're also going to encounter some psychopaths. You're going to encounter some really, really bad people that are fighting with this addiction and doing horrible, horrible things. Um, but you'll, you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot about this addiction and why they do the things that they do. Um, to continue the reading, he relapsed when our son was two weeks old. And after that, I have pretty much been raising and supporting our son by myself with absolutely no support. I have been no contact for over six months and broke up with him in September of 2022. You know, again, just had a child, two weeks old, and the addict relapses. Probably doesn't make sense to you, right? Like, does your son not mean anything to you? Is this the time to, to go back on a, on a bender? They can't help it. The pressure is too overwhelming. They will relapse on your wedding day. They will relapse the day you go into surgery. They will relapse on the day you're closing on your new house. They will relapse the day you have your finals. They will relapse on the most important day of your life, the day that you're giving birth to your child. They will relapse that day or the next day or a week later and just totally screw the whole thing up. This is how it is. This is how it is. There's nothing that you have done wrong. You didn't cause his addiction but remember you cannot control his addiction and you cannot cure his addiction the only bet that you have especially as i'm going to continue reading you guys are going to see how how bad this really gets you have to walk away from this person you have to walk away from this person because it's never going to get better unless they want to get better for themselves but the story continues so chloe says i started to educate myself on narcissism to understand his family and found out he has those traits as well with some psych psychopathic tendencies. I took it upon myself to end the relationship and made him move out when our baby at the time was two and a half years old. I didn't want my son growing up around his father's actions and abuse. We tried for a little over a year to make it work, but he was never home for more than a week or two at a time due to his drinking. 
and are fighting because I was miserable because I never got the bare minimum from him. I would make him go stay at his parents until he could sober up. He would come home and we would try again, but to no avail. I was basically grasping to any hope at this point. And again, Chloe, you know, he was drinking before. He was relapsed when your son was just two weeks old. Now we're talking two and a half years later when you finally threw him out, ended the relationship. You can only imagine those two and a half years were horrible, horrible. The ups and downs, they're sober for a day, they're sober for a week. They string two weeks together and you think, okay, you know what, this is actually working out. I, 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 I don't think he's going to drink anymore. People start asking you, hey, how are you? And you're like, hey, yeah, he hasn't drank in two weeks. Like That's the first thing that you say when people ask you how you're doing. The first thing you say is how long they haven't been hitting the bottle. And it's like, I'm not asking you about him. I'm not asking you about his drinking habits. I'm asking you, how are you? You see, we lose ourselves. We lose ourselves when we're, hang when we're dating uh, an alcoholic. We lose ourselves. Our lives become, it, 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 our lives revolve around their sobriety. And that's all we think about. That's all we ruminate about. That's all we stress about. You see? You finally came to that realization that it's like, hey, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this fighting anymore. I'm miserable. You're here for a week. You're gone. You sober up. You relapse again. It's detrimental to everybody's health in the family. So I can't, and I don't blame you for, for asking him to move out. I don't blame you whatsoever for ending that relationship. I can tell you, it doesn't get any better. Rare, very rare are the times that, that an alcoholic will actually work a program and stay sober for 10, 20 years. It happens, I know them, I met them in the programs back in the day, but that doesn't mean that, that it's life is peachy. Remember, they're just one drink away from screwing it all up. That's a lot of pressure, especially when they have stressors, especially when, when they have responsibilities and things get overwhelming. You know, that little, that little dormant voice, that little dormant voice is always there in the background, looming in the background. It's urging them to have a drink. It's urging them, hey, it's okay, you got this, me and you, we got this, we can have a drink, you know, it'll calm you down. And they gotta tune that voice out. They gotta pick up the phone, call their sponsor, call other people in the program, hey, look, I'm struggling, you know, can we get together for a coffee? Sometimes that phone gets heavy. And they don't wanna call because they wanna drink. Alcohol, my sponsor used to tell me in Al-Anon, I used to go to Al-Anon, he used to tell me, he's like, look, alcoholics drink. That's what alcoholics do. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Years later, it made sense. That's what alcoholics do, they drink. And they're struggling not to drink. They're struggling to, to go day by day without picking up. It's not easy, it's not easy. So, we shall continue. The fact that my ex is going to be there to help his new supply raise their daughter kills me. He never helped me. He watched me struggle every day and continues to try and hurt me and bring me down. Before I closed all my social media accounts, he would post on Facebook back to back Re revengeful posts and created a massive shrine for his new supply just to rub it in my face quote I have never been this happy quote I have never met a woman this amazing quote I have never loved someone as much as I love her quote I am building a life with someone I want to be sober for quote I am so happy end quote it was so obvious to everyone that knew us that he was trying to hurt me with his every breath. I see it, but it still hurt. I know this is giving him power, and I know I have to get my power back. But with this baby coming, I am at a loss, and I'm taking a break from being strong and just sitting here with my little white flag waving above my head. 
I'll stop there. I'll just comment on that too. You know, it's cruel when your exes take to social media to post things like that. They know you're reading, or they're hoping you're reading, or they're hoping that your mutual friends are reading it. Whatever the case may be, it's really immature. It's passive aggressive. It's taking it's taking a dig. If you're really happy, you don't have to announce it to the world. I find it hysterical how people take to social media to um, to air their dirty laundry. They, they they swear they have an audience. <laughs> Most of the time, no one's reading that shit. No one wants to read that shit. No one cares about your problems. Let's just be honest. Nobody cares about your problems. People have their own problems. Okay? People have their own problems. They go to social media to fill you know, or to get a fix, a dopamine fix on something, doom scrolling on some stuff. Some people get addicted to drama and they love reading other people's dramas just to make themselves feel better. It's like, oh, look, look what this person is dealing with. Oh, my God, did you hear that? And all of a sudden... They realize, hey, my life ain't, too, ain't so bad. But they don't really care. They don't really care about none of that. So it's interesting when the narcissist or the recovering addict, when the asshole, whatever you want to say, starts posting stuff like that. They're only doing it for you. Because they know that you're the only one that actually cares. You are the only one that actually cares. Nobody else does. Believe me. When I go on social media and I see dumbasses posting stuff like that, that like, in like a split of a split of a split of a second like that that is that is flicked off so fast i could care less about people's agendas i could care less about things that people post like this i don't give a shit i'm just looking for the things that interest me i tend to follow some people because they're friends and family and then they have shit like this. i just scroll through or i mute them so I won't read that crap. I don't care. I'm just looking for basketball shit, cookies, recipes for stuff I shouldn't be eating, right? Um, you know, whatever it is that interests me is the only thing that I'm that I'm looking for like a few minutes, and then that's the end of it. I don't care about other people's lives, and believe me, nobody cares about your life. But this guy knows. This those quotes are directed at you, Chloe. Now, I don't know how you're coming across that. I, I, I would you know, hope that by this time, if you've been studying this channel, some of the work that we do here, uh, you have to block people like that. You can't be following those people on social. You mentioned that you, you know, before you closed the accounts, he was posting that stuff. So hopefully um, you're not continuing to read his stuff now in the aftermath. But at the time when you were doing it, I'm sure, I'm sure it destroyed you. The thing is that you can't believe that. He's not really happy. <laughs> and he's not going to stay sober for long. Okay? Like, we all, we hope, we hope he does. Okay? Well, we hope he does. But it's not, it's not, it's not likely. And I, I read your whole document. It doesn't sound like he's got a program right now, especially if he's doing stuff like that. Those things, those, those are malicious acts. That's not, that's not how someone in recovery behaves. That's not how someone in, in recovery behaves. Those passive aggress aggressive quotes and con all that shit that he's posting, that's not how someone that's working a spiritual program behaves. So he's obviously, obviously not. He's obviously not. So he's been with the new supply since September of 2022, which is around the same time you broke up with him, right? He was with her two days after getting out of rehab to get clean for me and our family. But I told him he cannot come home again. So he focused his efforts on her, of course. Of course he's gonna focus his efforts on her. He's got, enough, he's got nobody else. A little history on the new supply. He had met her one year earlier at a bus stop where he was buying drugs when he relapsed at another point in our relationship. Yeah, okay. I know, too many chances, right? After I miscarried our nine-week-old. Oof. So he's off banging this cam model while I'm home bleeding from losing our nine-week-old and once again, left alone with our baby, 
who was 11 months old. They were together for six weeks before he decided to get clean and call things off with her. So he went back to rehab and then said he wanted to fix us. So I thought I would try one more time for our family. Meanwhile, she went on about her life, who knows where, but she was always the one that I would throw in his face as what he did hurt me. How could he leave me and our son and go live in the streets with this girl? I learned addicts do crazy things when in active addiction, but I failed to understand his actions. Him being with her cut me deep, so I think the fact he chose her as the new supply after I would not let him come home the last time was done on purpose because he knew how much she hurt me. I have talked to her as well, and she didn't really want anything to do with him as she was working on her sobriety as he was pressuring her into a relationship so he could put it on his new Facebook page also to hurt me. In the end, his love bombing won her over. Okay, a lot of things here. So as you can see, so he met this woman a year prior. So he's already been lying and cheating, right? Because he's, he's, you know, telling you about this other woman, you know, like you know about this situation. That, that's already, that's like micro cheating situation right there. That's already toxic. Um, he's off with, what, this cam model, like you said, while you're home struggling with your situation with a miscarriage and all. I'm just a terrible, terrible person. Terrible person. What gets me is that you're talking with her. Like, do you, do you realize now, and this goes for everybody here on the channel, if you're dealing with, with you know, narcissism, where you're being triangulated with a new supply, like, do not speak with a new supply. I know that may sound counterintuitive, but you gotta realize that the new supply may just be another toxic person. It could be another narcissist. It could be a deranged sociopath. It could be a hater. It could be someone with such low self-esteem that it doesn't matter what you tell them about this narcissist or crazy addict or whatever. They want you out of the picture. They're so obsessed with the only person that love bombs them, the only person that shows them any type of attention that they're going to side with the abuser. They're going to side with the abuser. They're going to lie. They're going to feed you lies. They're going to manipulate with him they're going to play along with him to destroy you. Even though in the process they're being destroyed too, but they don't realize it because they're pathetic. Okay? Do not speak with the new supply unless it's to trap them or set them up or something you know, criminally based. Okay, Because like I said, some of these people are deranged sociopaths. Um, but aside, aside for that, do not speak with them thinking that you're going to reach them, that somehow, some way, you guys are going to be in cahoots together and you're going to work together and you're going to heal each other and you're going to be there no look especially <laughs> women can be very competitive too like in a situation and they just they just want the guy that has more options so do not think for one minute that you guys are on the same team okay do not do not think that do not do not make that mistake because you are going to get burned okay now clearly this woman it hurts you knowing that it's her, right? Knowing that it hurt that it, that it's her just cuts you deep, like you said. Uh, so of course, who do you think he's gonna double down with? You think he's gonna be like, oh, okay, you know what? I'll just break up with her. I'll, I'll find another woman, but I'm not gonna go back to that one because I know that that one really, really affects you, and you are the mother of my child. So you know what? I'll, I'll meet someone else eventually. No, 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 no. no. A malignant predator like this guy, right, that preys on your emotions is going to double down on that one person that he knows for a fact really, really hurts you. Of course he's going to do that. Of course he's going to do that. Um, he says they never fight or argue and never have bad days. She's basically okay with whatever and accepts him and loves him 100% for exactly how he is. <laughs> like, do not buy that line, okay? She has been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Oh, wonderful. And has a 13-year-old daughter that she lost custody of due to drug use, I believe. Wonderful, gets better. 
All I know is the father has custody of their daughter and she only gets to see her a couple of times a year under good circumstances. All right, so. We have now revealed the type of person that your abuser has decided to double down on. We have now revealed the type of person that your abuser knocked up we have now revealed that a new baby is on its way and the parents of that poor innocent child are two addicts, struggling recovering addicts, one with paranoid schizophrenia, the other guy with psychopathy and narcissism. Poor, poor child is coming into this world. If there's anything that should kill you, maybe I should cut that word out. It's too late. If there's anything that should really, really impact you, it's knowing that these two broken, toxic people are bringing a new life into this world that's most likely going to inherit these addictions and these personality disorders. And it's going to be raised it's going to be raised probably not for long because I would imagine DCF will take that child away from them eventually but it's gonna be raised by two really, really sick people. Going back to the beginning, you know, you're struggling that he's gonna have a baby with this woman. And I'm here to tell you that that's the way the you feel, that's the way you feel. But don't need to carry this burden anymore when you think logically and I know feelings are not logical but when you start to think logically it's like wait a minute I'm suffering and I'm struggling because my abusive ex who I terminated the relationship with because it was unhealthy and I did not want my child around that type of abuse and behavior that person decided to find himself a low-hanging fruit another addict like him because you see that that's what they have in common so they're going to connect in that way right those pieces fit and now you're all down because he got her pregnant and that's his new family like you know what good riddance good riddance to him good riddance to her they have bigger problems now you don't need to carry this burden any longer it's a sad story absolutely it's a sad story and like I said if you if you visit those rooms if you visit AA and a you know if you go there you'll hear much much worse stories than this one I'm not saying I'm not downplaying your situation just letting you know if you think this is bad the stories that I have heard the people that I have worked with but you know what this is your story this is your pain this is your struggle and it's the only thing that's real because it's yours that's fine you know that's fine that's okay but you have the choice to start looking at this in a different light you did what many cannot do you ended the relationship I know you tried and you tried again and you tried again and you tried again but you still ended the relationship that's not easy to do that's not easy to do. And he has shown you who his loyalties stand with. All you need to do is tap into that part of you that ended that relationship. Remember how you felt when you had enough and you realized, hey, this is not for me. I can't have my son around this. I need for you to tap back into that mindset and stop yourself from dwelling on these people any longer stop yourself catch those thoughts right 
catch those thoughts when they come because they will come and remind yourself hey wait a minute I got rid of this guy for a reason and now he's chosen this other sick person to start a family with you know what and you can be grateful that this person is out of your life and you can be grateful that you made the right decision and you can be grateful that you're strong and you're, you're moving forward and when these thoughts come notice them notice that they're there but add a little logic to it and say okay it makes no sense for me to be dwelling on something like that because that doesn't bring me any value that's not helping me along my healing journey the fact that you got out that's what we want to celebrate you got out of that situation because you could still be in it you could still be in it hoping that he's not going to cheat on you hoping that this woman's out of his life hoping that he's going to be there for you and the kids but it's not it's beyond the point of no return. He's having a child with another woman. This is over. I know it hurts, but this is over. Believe me, you do not want to carry this pain and continue to experience the pain every single day. Okay, the pain is there to, to catch your attention and it got your attention and you ended the relationship, but the suffering is optional. You wanna keep suffering? Let them go. You have enough on your plate. You have enough on your plate. He made his choice a long time ago. He made his choice. And I know it affects you, and I know it affects the kids, but he made that choice. You tried to make it work. He couldn't. He just, he just couldn't give you what you needed because he's sick. He's got an addiction. Tell me he comes from bad family. You tell me there's psychopathy in there. You tell me there's narcissism in there. Now the mother of this new child, paranoid schizophrenic. This woman has, she can't even, she lost custody of her own child. And she's not like she sees the child every, every week or every two weeks. You just said she sees her twice a year. And this is the woman that you're feeling bad about. This is, this is what's tormenting you. This, 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 this woman, this situation situation's beneath you. Chloe, this is beneath you. Let it go. Let it go. Thanks for sending that in. I, I know this was a long video. I know it's a little bit all over the place. But when you're struggling, when you're, you're dating, you're struggling with someone with addiction and narcissism and psychopathy and, and betrayal and, and triangulation. There's another man, there's another woman, there's another child. and Everything's all over the place. It's not, it's, it's not a straight line, guys. It's not a straight line. The, the chaos is everywhere. That's why it's so difficult to explain it, it's so difficult to put it into words, it's so difficult to sit down with somebody that you're trying to explain your life to. And it's like they, they don't even want to hear it. it it's, it's, so, it's beyond toxic. But you did the right thing in putting it on paper or, or typing it out. It starts to get it out. You know, you get it out of your system. And, I, you know. I've experienced stuff like this for a long time. A lot of people in this channel have too. You're not, you're not alone, right? But tap, tap into that mindset that you had when you were strong and you, you asked him to leave, okay? Because that's what you gotta do now. Uh, that, that strength is still in there. Like you said, it, you, right now you're, you're waving that little white flag, but that's not gonna be you forever. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of fact, I believe towards the end, um, not in the document, I remember you emailed me again and you told me that you felt so much better after having poured this out, right? So um, that in and of itself is going to help you continue moving forward. And that's what we all have to do here is to continue moving forward regardless of what's going on, regardless of how we feel. We gotta keep moving forward, not backwards. We can't get back into an old toxic situation that time and time ag again has proven that cannot work. It's been proven that is detrimental to your health, to your mental health, to your safety. You got to move forward, not backwards. All right. <sighs> Hope things work out. Follow up with me in a few months. Let me know how things are going, how you're feeling. Um, leave some comments in this video if, if, if you don't mind 
you know, exposing who you are, but for, for now you're Chloe. <laughs> um, but that's all I got on that. So thanks for, thanks for watching to the very end. I hope this video has been helpful to you and to everyone that has watched. And um, if you got some value, drop a like on the video, comment below, leave me your experiences, your strength and hope, how you've dealt with a situation like this with your narcissist abuser or alcoholic, drug addict, when they got with somebody else and they got somebody else pregnant. How did you cope with that? How long did it take you to realize that they were no longer your problem and how have you been managing your life ever since? I feel it will be extremely helpful to the survivors in this community. So appreciate if you take the time to leave your, your experiences in the comments below. Um, hope I see you guys in the next video. My name is Kita. This is Psychopath Exposure. And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day. Catch you guys next time. Peace.